Western civilization is going through a phase where its origin stories are being questioned and reevaluated. This is especially true of Christopher Columbus, the navigator and visionary from Genoa, Italy, who led the first Spanish expedition to discover the New World for early modern Europe. The effects on the native populations of the Americas have been severely criticized. To the point where a man once considered a hero is now demonized, his reputation attacked, and his statues torn down by angry mobs. But does Christopher Columbus's reputation deserve this treatment? You may know the story of how in the late 1400s, Christopher Columbus spent years trying to convince the kings of Europe to finance his voyage across the Atlantic Ocean, hoping to find a new trade route to India and China. Eventually, Queen Isabella of Spain supported the expedition. In 1492, three ships sailed out from Spain. After a long and difficult voyage, they found the New World, and so began hundreds of years of European exploration and settlement in the Americas. Many people will claim the discovery also began an age of slavery and genocide against the native people. There is truth in that, but of course the real story is much more complicated. When researching the book Columbus, The Four Voyages, I was surprised to find criticism of Columbus began shortly after his first of four voyages to the New World, and even intensified a few decades after his death. The epilogue of the book is titled Columbus Day, and begins with a list of people who disliked Columbus, including rival explorers and his subordinates who turned against him. Critics also included the official who arrested him, the king who disdained him, and the governor who replaced him. The most lasting damage to Columbus's reputation came from the pen of Bartolome de las Casas. Arriving in Hispaniola, the Caribbean island of Haiti, with the new governor, Ovando, Las Casas became the first priest to be ordained in the Americas, often called the Apostle to the Indians. In his influential Jeremiad, a short account of the destruction of the Indies, written in 1542, he laid out the torture and genocidal practices of the Spanish colonialists who followed Columbus. Excerpts from his account are quoted in the epilogue of Columbus, The Four Voyages, plus a full three pages in the book Eyewitness to History, in a chapter titled Spanish Atrocities in the West Indies, 1513 to 1520. And by the way, this last time period was under the governorship of Diego Columbus, the oldest son of Christopher Columbus. Las Casas wrote, the Spaniards with their horses, their spears and lances, began to commit murders and strange cruelties. They entered into towns, boroughs, and villages, sparing neither children nor old men, neither women with child, neither them that lay in, but that they sliced, as if they had been opening of lambs shut up in the fold. There are many more accounts of torture and death that are too graphic to quote here, but you get the idea from these illustrations published with this criticism. Las Casas also described the enslavement of the natives. There was an officer of the kings, to whom they gave for his share 300 Indians, of whom at the end of three months there died by him in the travel of the mines 260, in such sort that there remained now but 30. In three or four months, myself being present, there died more than 6,000 children, by reason they had plucked away from them their fathers and mothers, which they sent into the mines. Las Casas championed the nearly extinct victims of this outrage, the simplest people in the world, he wrote, of the Taino Indians, long-suffering, unassertive, and submissive, without malice or guile, utterly faithful and obedient. In short, the kind of subjects the Spanish crown would want to have, Yet instead of cultivating these gentle and intelligent people, we know for sure our fellow countrymen have, through their cruelty and wickedness, depopulated and laid waste an area which boasted more than ten kingdoms. 
conservative estimates are stark. Of 250,000 Indians under Spanish rule, only 40,000 survived after 15 years. After a few decades, only a few hundred survived. And the reason for this tragedy? In his words, purely and simply, greed. To be fair, most of the atrocities he witnessed happened under the governorship of Columbus's successors, not under Christopher Columbus himself, but I am willing to place responsibility on the leader who set the tone for those who followed. Columbus may have started with good intentions, but the cycle of violence began soon after his first voyage. Some of the natives of the Caribbean islands were more warlike than others, and they fought back as best they could. The violence escalated into torture and genocide, mostly inflicted by the Spanish who clearly dehumanized the natives and even took joy in their suffering. Plus, the Europeans' medieval views on slavery increased the suffering, much like what was happening in the rest of the world at the time. The world's views on slavery changed in the 19th century, to the point that Great Britain and the United States led the charge to outlaw slavery in the Americas Europe, and Northern Africa. Sadly, the idea of dehumanizing, enslaving, and slaughtering people under your control showed that it could only get worse, and can easily happen again. Meanwhile, the Taino people survived, and now have settled in places such as Puerto Rico, Cuba, and the Dominican Republic. So where does that leave us with the legend of Christopher Columbus and his discovery of the New World? I'd like to suggest we leave his images in place, to honor his vision and courage, but we must always tell the complete story so we can learn from his terrible mistakes. Otherwise, we risk learning nothing from history and condemning future generations to the same mistakes. Thank you for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to this channel for new videos every week or two, and see the description below for a list of books and films featured in this video.